In terms of real terminants, what are, what are some examples of some real-time insights that are popular right now or that, that have been useful in, in this recent environment? Just to, to touch on the theme about uh, data connectivity, data governance, right? Everyone talks AI, right? But there's no magic wand there, right? Your data needs to be highly connected and standardized that's fit for purpose, right? And so if you can connect a lot of data, um, you're going to be in a very advantageous position to do a lot of different things. So for a good example is that at spatial risk, we basically connect dozens of geospatial level data sources, right? And, you know, we can tell you that um, you know, here in the U.S., basically uh, only 20 percent of electricity production is, uh, is from renewables, right? And the average uh, facility that, that basically generates electricity for renew renewables is uh, less than 100,000 megawatts a year. Um, nuclear power, on the, on the other hand, averages 14 million megawatts a year, right? We, if we're going to get to net zero by 2050, I think it's nuclear power, not renewables, right? So if you look at the facts, if you connect the data well, you learn a lot of insight that's counter to what you're hearing in the market today, right? All this sustainability reporting from these corporates, right, with paints a rosy picture, well, it's not. If you look at the facts and you connect it well, it's a different picture emerges. Uh, Jesse, do you want to sure. chime in? Um, so at Ursa Space, um, our flagship product is our oil storage product, um, measuring tank heights and floating lids across well, globally. Um, so our big indicator is how do we um, correlate that to oil prices. But to echo my other panelists, um, we're looking more so, clients are coming to us more so looking at um, things like carbon sequestration, carbon capture, um, verification and validation of uh, climate positive uh, processes. Are providers doing what they're saying they're doing? Are people installing more um, solar panels? Things along that nature. And they're also wanting to see um, all this geospatial data condensed into a product, into something that is digestible easily by an analyst that doesn't need geospatial it doesn't, doesn't need a geospatial background at all. I just want to add to that, that there's so much data out there that lives at a geospatial level. Um, but they live, once again, they live in their own data, data silos. The data right now, geospatial, is really not fit for purpose for consumption by the, by the financial sector, right? Mm -hmm. So a reference data layer is going to emerge to help answer those questions for people. Instead of these bespoke one-off projects, you're going to have, you know, basically you can track an index from a physical asset location and understand at a granular level what's actually taking place. Mm -hmm. Um, John, what are, you, what are your thoughts, I guess, in terms of uh, real-time insights that are... With alternative data, there, there is, uh, I think, historically, the easiest use case was, you know, calling the quarter, seeing, seeing that uh, change, you know, between the end of the quarter and the day the company reported and try to catch that, that opportunity. Um, and I think that opportunity that still exists, maybe it's harder to find than it was five years ago. Um, but, you know, I also think, you know, there's a long-term use case for this as well. So if you have a three to five year time horizon in your investment, um, you have a thesis that you're going to monitor, maybe not on an hourly or a daily basis, but you're going to monitor that thesis over the course of time. And as facts change, you may need to, to, to pivot your position a little bit. So, uh, you know, there, there is an opportunity uh, for alternative data, both near term and lo looking long term. Uh, so I, I don't think it's, I, I think maybe it has a little bit of a, a bad reputation. I don't even know if it's bad, but a reputation of, of just the short-term guys calling the quarters can use it. Nobody else can use it. You know, I think people are starting to, to understand that there's a, a far broader use case than, than just that. Right. So it gets away from the idea that there's a data set that's a silver bullet. Or... Um, okay. Uh, yeah, uh, Jessica, what, what do you, in terms of, you know, I guess, sifting real time from longer term insights. How do you approach that? Yeah, well, I think that was a great example. So calling the quarter, um, my first quant job was at Starmine. And what we were trying to do was like build, you know, better um, subsets of analyst predictions to try to have this predicted surprise. Um, and I remember that was like my first project out of grad school. So I got there and I was a biophysicist teamed up with a bunch of computational chemists. And I was like, so what, what do we actually do here, guys? And they're like, yeah, so these are all these numbers in this table. Um, analysts like pick what they think is going to happen. And then we just figure out like a better guess. And I remember I do this whole project, update all the data. And 
I think they still sell, sell Starmine um, analyst rankings. Um, I think they're valuable. But the, the thing I found was the biggest value add in this step of trying to get a smarter prediction was to throw out obviously stale and outlier data. And I was like, oh, wow. Oh, my gosh, guys, we should go tell IBES their, their mean or average or whatever they call it is wrong. And like they should update it. Right. And everyone was like, no, 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 no. that's like half of what we, we do here. We don't want to tell them. So this calling the quarter has been around forever. I think people are getting smarter about trying to call it earlier and then play it over multiple quarters and trying to stretch that kind of prediction out. So I think it is a little bit about trying to say, where can you look at something we might have thought of as event data or rapid data and try to like spin it into longer term predictions? Because, you know, that's what I see is if if I'm going to use real time data, it's probably going to be risk management, like in a really real time case. So, you know, OK, should we go to benchmark on GameStop, right, or something like this or um, Hawaiian Electric, right? Should we go to benchmark on Hawaiian Electric? Like, what are you doing right in that moment? Um, and I think Judith said earlier, and how are you thinking about, like, is this an isolated problem? Is this a contagion problem? You know, we don't sort of flip and try to get on the other side of quick trades like that. We're trying to look at risk management. Um, so I think that's how I might be thinking about that kind of um, real time driven data is from a risk, risk management standpoint. And beyond that, we really need to look for predictive signals that have a very long um, horizon to them. Um, because the types of products that I oversee now, they're just um, such higher capacity that we can't move so quickly. And we need to find um, basically high capacity, longer term ideas. Um, and there are a lot of competitors in that space. So um, thinking about how do you use data that other folks like either differently or data that other folks aren't aren't looking at or don't have access to if it's proprietary.